Project Greenlight is an internet contest. We pick a script, we pick a director, we let somebody get a chance to make their movie. This time we want to make a horror movie. Feast is a very scary movie. It's Evil Dead meets Diner. This year we have a fantastic director, John Gulliger. It's been over 35 years getting here. Hopefully he's going to pay off. Now it's up to Marcus, Patrick, and John to make a terrific movie. It's the last week. If we don't shoot it this week, it's not going to end up in the film. There's no more time. There's no more money. So this is a very important week. This is lit for before the lights goes off. All right. Now I'm ready to direct a film. I feel that I just had to, uh, you know, get everything shot that I think needs to be in the film. No matter what, you know, I just had to push for it. So, John, we just got a call that, uh, that Krista has just arrived at LAX. One of the actresses that we need more than anything isn't there. And her request was when she called in was, uh, could she go home for a while? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, first step? Okay. It blew my mind because, you know, I'm walking in there, I'm looking at the week we've got ahead of us, and I'm putting things in place to make sure that this can go as smoothly as possible. I mean, I, I've never come across any of this. I don't know if, right. I don't know if you've ever experienced it. Okay. Well, I don't know how we're going to do all this. Then. You need the actors to show up on time. Especially if it's a low budget, though. And if an actor just happens to come in late, it really could ruin the day. She missed her flight the night before, but a phone call to my guys would have set us up differently for that day, and we would have planned shooting something else. <laughs> guys, we gotta set up this shot. I'm gonna yeah. try to make it look like a slip, slip, jump kind of thing. Well, we're trying to work backwards from the end of the day to make sure we got enough time to do it. On a bigger budget film, we might spend a week, even conceivably two weeks, doing a piece of action that's this big and involved. You're clearing, guys. Okay, it's picture, guys. Let's lock it up. Action. Hey, nice work, there, right? Good. Stand by. Okay. Paul talking about Paul's nice hair. We, it's growing. It's, it's growing, growing out. out. He's asked to let it grow out as, as much as possible. And so I've been painting in, you know, the silver stuff. Over the course of this film, Balthazar's hair had grown a whole lot. It's especially noticeable when you have a buzz cut. He's right. growing hair like nobody's business. It like, just kills me. He, yeah. It was... This idea, idea to do it, and now we're yeah. just hostage over this thing. Balthazar's next movie starts days after we wrap this movie. It's a Steven Spielberg produced miniseries, and he needs to have long hair for the for the role. I had a talk with the guys on the set. When we get into light, it will be really, really obvious. Right. Obvious to what, though? We haven't really been in light yet. Yeah, but we've seen you lit. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see. It's one of the scenes where I'm okay. lit. If Balthazar refuses to cut his hair, then we would have no other option but to go to his agent and take a more aggressive response to this. Krista has arrived. Everything that could possibly go wrong this morning went wrong. I'm never late, and it was just, it, it was, it was, uh, Chris has had some small parts in really big films, and she's probably seen what other actors get away with, but she can't bring that to our set. Chris is walking from trailer. Hey, hey, hey. How come we didn't know about this last night? Chris I missed my flight last night. I know. Because I was late, but I got here, and I'm here. No, 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 I'm doing it. It's worked out great. So, Kristen, this is uh, picking up the pickup from Friday where you were on your way back, you're pack pedaling, and we're just going to have you sprayed with some blood on this one. And we're going to have to put a little blood on you, too, before we do the take, because... Calm down with the blood, sweetheart. We're going to get it, don't worry. Don't get it in my eye, please, because it burns really bad. You did that before. Don't do it again. So you just had to close your eyes. It's a, it's a bloody movie. Hey, what movie did Krista sign up for? I don't know. Were they called Feast? She gets back like this. Bang! Splat! You know, she's backing up. So and um, look, well, the blood down. is the most important thing right, right now. But is she down here? Not what we shot the other day. Yeah, but I'm not going to do that again. I'm just going to come from here. But if we could just be up here and come back. Okay, can I get some knee pads? That'd be great. Yes. Okay. Kevin? Shake them, but don't break them, Chrissy. And action! Look 
Okay, Chris. Good deal. Nice one okay. side. Good. Okay, can we just do a pickup? The only mark. Action! <laughs> Okay, guys, we are moving on. Taking a lot of heat. Yeah. <laughs> when we had to take Krista back to the trailer and completely redo her hair and makeup in time to have her for the next take. Okay, so we want Krista for this shot. It would be faster and easier to just jump in the shower. Colleen. Okay. Yeah. So she should not be taking a shower. Makeup is saying you don't need to take a shower. I don't care what Michael Myers just said. What did they say? How long are they going to take? Everyone see? up there is saying don't take a shower. I don't think she got that much blood on her to tell you the truth. I wanted to just go ahead and just shoot. And, and, and Chris is like, oh, no, no. I have to get cleaned up. The blood stains the face. And, and if you leave it on too long, it'll start to actually leave stain marks. The blood does not stain the hair. And I'm, I don't know, I'm asking, why are we taking so long to do it? I thought we, she was going to be ready for this shot. Original estimate was 10 after, so another 15 minutes. And I think that that's even pushing it now. If she's going to be in the air another 10 minutes, if not 15. By the time I got down there, it was too late. She's already wet. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. <laughs> I was in a movie in Florida where the hero was such a pain in the ass to work with that they decided to kill him instead and make someone else the hero. Right? I love it. I love it. Hey, Krista? Yes. More blood. No. Um, you do. <laughs> okay, stop it. Um, Krista changed her bra. Her bra? The one that she's wearing is different than she's one born beforehand. So continuity can get a little weird, you know, just like Balthazar's haircut, you know. Everything in this film takes place in just a matter of hours, so you'll start noticing that things aren't, you know, the same. The nipples show through the they open, don't, they, don't. they don't show through the yeah. open. I knew that would be it. <clears throat> hey, Krista. Yes? Um, there was some wondering if about the... You, cha you change your bra and... and and did, you, did we change the bra or anything? No, you never saw it. I always had the thing on. Always. Okay. You've never seen it. But there was it. a, like, somehow, you know, we would see kind of like, we saw, we saw like, the outline of some, like, the nipples a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Just, no. just. No? No, but sorry. Okay. Just check. Just want to make sure. You want to. Okay. That was really embarrassing. I mean, Chris just flat out called me a nut. Sorry, I, I talked to her about the, uh, the bra thing. Didn't really go over too well. Um. <sighs> Ashcon, do you have beer guy on set? It's the last week, and everybody's trying to get the rest of the shots that we need. Everyone else is being really nice and helpful. And Kristen went and changed out of her wardrobe because she didn't want to hang around. Where's Ben? Colleen and Davis fill out our assistant director team. Together with Steven, the ADs are in charge of running the set. But if they're unorganized, things can unravel pretty fast. What did you just say? Per who? Come here, please. She came down and said that she's wrapped and she needs to sign out. And I said, really? Who told you that? The ADs thought that Krista wrapped herself, and no actor wraps themselves. If an actor comes to you and says, I'm wrapped, when the f*** do you start taking their word for it? Especially when it's somebody as bitchy as Krista. Krista's ability to um, get what she wants and play people against each other. Where I got to the point with her that I was like, dude, I would be so happy for you to be gone right now. If she comes to you and says, Ben wrapped me, then you go to Ben and you say, did you wrap Krista? That is a critical, critical step that just has to happen. It's just, as a rule, across the board, in your doing this job, just do that. I guess I know that rule and I'm at the point where I don't care. And I... Well, then, then I'm not going to be able to rely on you, Davis. All right, I'll pack my things. Guys, what's the story on Judah? I've got issues with uh, the inefficiency of the AD department. They've made some bad mistakes. Judah was wrapped. Hey, I wrapped him. When, just now? Because we've been calling for him for the last 20 minutes. They've 
made what appear to me to be some green mistakes. Crew call on Monday is at 9 a.m. We're cast, we're not crew. Why is it? The primary mistakes the ADs have made uh, are managing call times. The kind of tight budget we're on, we can't take those kind of hits. Balthazar decided not to cut his hair, and we needed to do something to motivate him. Should we just leave this one piece of hair here? You look completely normal. That was funny. Well, maybe not. Well, you're next. Huh? <laughs> 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 Should we leave these <laughs> straight back yeah. You look so awesome! <laughs> Senior year, half my high school had this haircut with like a, a really crappy mustache. <laughs> You did such a good job. <laughs> you got to do it. There's more, ladies and gentlemen. You got to do it. Wow. I went a little deeper, though. Wow. I, I went in straight with the money. Once he saw that there were not one, but two, but three, but four, but five people today that got that haircut, Balthazar stepped up, got in the chair, and said, cut me. Let's go. Go for it. Uh, we'll, we'll keep continuity with the scene that we're already in. Even at the risk of possibly losing the big giant movie after ours. This is the film that he's in right now, and this is the character that, that he signed up for, and, and he's gonna follow through with that, so I was very happy. Balthazar, you rule. All right! Come on. We got him! We're ready when you are, Steve. Okay, here we go. Roll time. Guys. Thank you, need to come in. Here we go, guys, very quiet. And action. First <laughs> <laughs> Cut, and that's a wrap. We'll just do everything else minus the glass. This day began to go sour pretty much from the get-go. We got off to a late start. Tomorrow, we need to shoot scene 183, which is going to be the real acid test. That's where we really need to pull together and make it happen. Today, we're shooting scene 183. Scene 183 is our all hell breaks loose scene. So many logistical complications, so much choreography to get through. It's next to an impossible job. Can I get John in here with Tom? Scene 183. This is the big scene that everybody's going like, how are you going to even shoot this? We did it on paper, we did it in storyboards, and you do it with people. It's totally different. We got to do that, the second setup with the other, the different monster. We are in the, the belly of the beast right now with the monster attacking in scene 183, and we don't have a great game plan to get out of it. We got to figure out a way that we can do 183, and then we got to make the blocky time count. The crew is definitely going to have to step it up. We'll know before lunch if we're in trouble. All right, creatures coming in. Today was really, literally the first day that monster stepped on our stage. And anytime you see the monster full form, it sends shivers down a director's spine. Scene 183 is the climax of the film, really. It's where our heroes fight back. The scene is very specific and spread out throughout the bar, so we got a lot of guys going on. And, and for every setup, we've got maybe five or six departments that are instrumentally involved in each shot. And suddenly he stands up, reveals himself. We kind of rehearsed it in a haphazard fashion. If we come out and don't know what every bit of action is, we're DOA. You push it, just push it a little bit more, because then I've got loose fingers here. Did you kill that line up there? John's been really coming into his own through the course of this film. Uh, scene 183 is going to be his biggest challenge, so I'll be very interested to see how he manages it. Okay, guys, here we go. Roll sad. Ready and action. Gary, hands. Cut. Okay, guys, here we go. We have 19 setups to get through. It's the climax of the film. We have one day to shoot it, and we need to make it flat out. We need to make this day. Let me know when you want the 45-pound head pushing up through the hole. Because we wanted to keep the monsters interesting, we designed our monsters to be two different things. One is a giant overcoat that they wear at the beginning of the film. By the end of the film, they've all shed their overcoats, and you see them in their horrific glory. Christ! That's it! That's me pushing it up through the hole. The hole is way too small. That's why I'm trying to ram our giant, bloody grey oversuit through the hole. It was ridiculous. So I'm just wondering, can you angle it at the, 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 the... Oddly enough, I can't see the skull right now. 
It wasn't like a film set anymore. It was like a sushi bloody party. Everyone's walking around carrying sushi and having conversations about the weekend and being complete ass while a bunch of us are on set trying to kill ourselves, particularly me, who's lying on the floor underneath a set on a bunch of apple boxes covered in blood. We go a little bit lower on the, on the beast. I can't get any lower. They can't, they can't go any lower. We'll look, hide it. Look at me. Look at the position I'm in. Right, Tom. Do you have any other stupid questions you want to ask me? Can we have, is it, can we have like a more, like a vigorous trashing as if it's trying to break its way through? It just gets a bit wearing after a while. I think Gary's had some issues with John since the start of this shoot. Gary lives and breathes creature work, and John's never worked with creatures before. Where are we? What are we doing? Hello, anyone? John has a different way of doing things to what I'm used to. Until John sees what he doesn't like, he doesn't know what he does like. Yeah, I can have it dance the poker. It's like, you know, you should really shut your mouth, mate. You're the director, mate. Why don't you f direct me, eh? Oh, very quiet, please. Lock it up. Then he gets pulled up in the frame. <laughs> Action. Looks pretty good, though. OK, guys, here we go. Picture's up. OK, hey, guys, we're moving on. We wrap, Krista and Dwayne. Yeah. Okay, I'm wrapped. I get to go home and actually have a beautiful day. It's gorgeous today, so that'll be good. Bye. See you later. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. When I was changing the call sheet around and changing the schedule, it was like a brain fuzz. I went, yeah, that's a wrap on Krista. And then, though, I looked at the call sheet and realized that we needed Krista in the final scene. I made a mistake. I need her here for three, but if she's not too far away, just bring her back. Hey, Krista, it's Davis. It's 1.30. You've left. Would you call me back when you get this? I'd like you to turn around. We don't have Krista. I'm trying to figure out what to do at this point. Answer from Krista. Just keep going. Krista was wrapped. But we're trying to call her to get her to come back in here. How was she wrapped? You know what? It's my fault. that one. OK. Apologize to her when she gets here. No, I will. If she gets here. This late in the show, with all the things going on, you just can't afford any more mistakes, especially ones involving when actors are coming and going. I've been calling and getting voicemails for the last hour. John in here with Tom. Okay, so how is this gonna work? What do you okay. want to do? We're gonna do the uh, the scene between Boss Man and Tuffy. Have your backside up. Anytime there's a sex scene, it's difficult. It doesn't matter who it's with. So how much are you gonna be seeing right here? Obviously, it's a little uncomfortable. Kind of like like this, you know. Wait, can, can I see what it looks like? Sure. <laughs> and, uh, now, only, only Steven's allowed to get... I thought things would go pretty smoothly, but I guess I was wrong. Yeah. Bikini or something like that? <laughs> the way that I understood it is it just appeared, and that's just what people told me, is it really would appear. So we're on the scene, there's me here, and then whatever he's doing back there, and so you'd never see my ass in the air. That's what was explained. Okay. But I'm not so okay with my hair and doing all that stuff. I think we were a little surprised that Krista was resistant to the sex scene, given the fact that some of the things that she's done in the past, she wasn't exactly shy. I'm not wearing a two string. It's a sex scene. I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. I didn't foresee Krista just saying, like, she flat out just wasn't going to do it. You're not going to be naked. Right. On the set or anything. Right. No, it's all good. I'm glad to talk about it. Got me a little ticked off, you know, that she was kind of, you know, sort of playing those games and, and stuff. She doesn't want it. Oh, Even I know. Appear that, you know, it's like, I think it's that thing of, like, separating yourself from her past. I don't want to, you know, throw her past up in front of her and all that kind of stuff, and, and I didn't do that, but come on. <laughs> okay, guys, here we go. Let's close set. Action. Ah! <laughs> oh, yeah. Make some noise for the boss man. I thought it looked good, and you know, it's basically the way it was supposed to look. Dwayne is a little over the top. <laughs> but 
I guess that keeps that element, you know, of like not being too so uh, serious about it. I'm good. It was not a big deal. It's just that thing when the person just says no, you know, f you. Okay, it's picture, guys. Let's lock it up and action. Let's try it one more time. I'm finished. <laughs> oh, dude, like black bean soup in there. Get it! We are now well into overtime trying to get one last shot, so we're fighting our way through to the end. Yes, mark it, guys. Okay, guys, gotta shoot. Pictures up, let's clear. Here I slide. We need to pull the plug in. Overtime is one of the most critical issues we face in making a low budget film. After eight hours, everybody's rate goes up, and then after 12 hours, it goes up again. Our days start to spiral out of control in terms of length. You know, we're spending money every minute we're there. There's no more money coming from the studio. All the moment, movement is good. Okay, good. For, for our kinetic, our, the kinetic feel. What are we, what are we waiting on here? Well, we start shooting and then see where we are. And action. And cut. And cut. And that's a wrap. Thank you very much, everybody. Hey, everybody, can I have your attention for one second? Today we had a, a, you know, a tough day. My Joel and I had gotten together and decided it'd be a good idea to maybe show the crew some of what we've been working so hard to do. Just wanted to thank you all personally and say, you know, keep up the good work. It's really paying off. There's a little bit of footage we'd like you all to take a look at over on stage two. It's set up where you can see some of the fruits of all the hard work that's gone into the film so far. Please. Everybody should come over and sit down here. We should turn out the lights and... People on that set right now they have no idea what we're making. What you're going to see is basically what's called an assembly. The, the objective was basically to let everybody see a little bit of what we've been working on, to bring everyone together a little bit more, a little more cohesion in, in the crew, and and uh, kind of boost morale. They're coming right now. So we got to lock this bar down. jumping out of my skin. That was the goal, was to deliver something like that. If their reaction is any indication, we're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're set. That was Although they are a biased crowd, but I think we're doing all right. So. You guys gonna hang around so I can clean this off? Yeah. <laughs> I think it was a good tool to let everybody know that we're doing something cool and it feels really stupid at times, and but that the end product is, is gonna be funny and scary. Tom, great work. Uh, I know it's... I really like the cut that we saw. It's really good. And it's, it's actually better than I expected. You think we have a movie? Yeah! And it kind of got me going. It made me feel better. It's been a long day. Everybody's really tired. It was nice that they got to see what they've been working on for the last two months. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Oh. Do that now? Footage last night. Hmm? Footage last night. Thoroughly. Cut footage. Would you like to cut footage? That was pretty fun, huh? The whole film's like that. The atmosphere is getting a lot lighter on set, especially after everyone saw the footage last night. That cut scene, I think, did a lot for morale. I think that watching the movie last night really made everybody excited about what they were working on. People were more upbeat, more excited. I was right, you guys. Left arm. I was right. <laughs> so what is it? You can see it in everybody's actions today. I say he made it. She says, no, he didn't. Then I go back there and I go, yeah, he did. And They're hearing. This week has been progressive. It seems like everybody is starting to just really work together pretty well as a team, from the 80s to, you know, uh, the DP and the director. Okay, now what happened? Now, he's, oh, what happened to him?
to him. Yeah. I'd like to do separate so that we can cut them together as, as we need it. Everybody's kind of getting the language, and, and um, it seems like it's going smoother to me. I'm just going to be optimistic and say that, yes, we are going to make our day today. Just read. They just have Bob Lazar jump up there. Action. Ah! Cut. John is coming into his own and feeling a little more comfortable vocalizing. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Bob Lazar. OK, guys, that's a wrap. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think there's a little, um, easier going today, you know, than yesterday. Since everybody loved the footage that we showed them, we overnighted the tape of the scene to Andrew Rohner at Dimension in New York. So we're anxiously waiting his response. Is this it? Is this the word? This is the call. Basically, you only get one chance to impress the studio. The first time they see any footage of your film is really the moment they're gonna embrace you or reject you. Since everybody loved the footage that we showed them, we overnighted the tape of the scene to Andrew Rohner at Dimension in New York. So we're anxiously waiting his response. Oh. Hey. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's Nick and Mike. And Ben and Patrick Melton. Hey guys, I think we made the right choice. Very impressed by it. I thought he was doing a great job. It looked good. Good energy. It had scares. It had jumps. It had gore. It had humor. You know, it'll get better as he works on it. Even a little bloody monster humping the deer head looked good. Good. I'm glad he liked it. Andrew was happy. You could tell that he was happy that he saw something he wasn't expecting in the footage we sent him. I think this is the little movie that can. Hello, you know, John. I was really excited. Thank you for sending it. I will do that. All right, guys, take it easy. Talk to you later. See you, Andrew. It's really nice to see that all of this work for John is paying off where it should. If I could just have your attention for a few minutes before we, uh, we hit the weekend here, I just want to say a few words. Last night, you saw a little bit of what we've been doing for the last month, believe it or not, 20 days. We sent it to the studio last night overnight, and they called this morning. They're very happy with what they've seen. I don't think anybody expected this little movie directed by John Gulliger to actually look like it did. Thank you guys very much. It's all looking great. Thank you. We might actually have something. It's kind of, it's kind of creepy. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Today, we're going to be visited by Joe and Gavin Maloof. We're very excited that you guys are uh, on board and, and working with us on this. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting it, for us. Have you seen some of the footage uh, here? Terrific. The footage is great, it. yeah. Feast is very gory and very scary. I like the script. I, I think there were some very humorous parts in it, which I think a lot of people will, will enjoy. Maloof Motion Pictures are our producing partners on Feast, so they've been on the set throughout the shoot. But this is the first time Joe and Gavin have had a chance to be here in person. Joe. Hey, Joe. Nice to meet you guys. Ben is Obviously, uh, I'm the, the number one most grateful guy on set because I'm the guy spending your money. You guys bought this whole week for us. So One of the things that attracted us to this particular film is that we weren't just writing a check. Ben and Matt wanted us to actively get involved in the uh, marketing, the promotion, the music part of it with Maloof uh, music. And I think that's what really excited us. Hey, how are you, buddy? Good to see you. How are you? Chris, I think you remember uh, Joe and Gavin Maloof. Yeah, Gavin Maloof, nice Joe Maloof. Nice to meet you. Thank you guys very much for uh, helping us out and coming out. We showing sure you a good time. When I saw Chris Moore was hanging out with the Maloofs. At the last minute before we were going to throw the blood onto Jenny Wade's face, um, I pulled Chris Moore aside and told him he had to do it. What sure, did do come on now. It was actually an internet contest we did, Jenny. We put a picture of you and we said, you want to throw blood on Jenny? Come on down on Wednesday. And you won. I won. It's so weird. Okay, so you We have blood. It's blood. And action. <laughs> She really looks good. See? It became one of these things where it just made sense for us to, to be involved on a project that we felt passionate about. And, and the guys really responded to the material. So uh, we're, we're really excited about it. So. Ah! <laughs> Jesus. You didn't I? Yeah. 
day 25, and we are going like gangbusters, trying to uh, finish up everything, because this is the last day on set. Today is our last day of shooting on the bar set, and we need to get everything. This is our last opportunity. Because we got so much to get, we're shooting with two crews today. John's going to have to be running back and forth and trying to direct them both. Okay, well, number one set. Two set. Yo. It's the final week, and the final weeks are always going to be this mad rush to get everything shot. Everybody's going to be trying to do everything they can, and you just got to make sure nothing falls through the cracks. Yeah, so he's going to—he's just right here. Action! I got it. I think it's going to be very difficult for John to be able to be running between two different units. I think it's hard enough on the first unit um, to keep John focused in the way we need to. We literally have two DPs working at the same time, so. It gets a little stressful. How's it going over there? Other side. Tough. <laughs> Tough. Well, you know. Harris wants to work with you and just, you know, sort of try to mesh, you know, with your ideas. And he really feels like, you know, he wants to support you. Any uh, comments, Tom? Um, no. I have a pretty strong idea as to how he likes to shoot things and what kind of movement he would like to see and things like that. So I'm trying to keep it true to, to as if John were here. Hey, Gary. Looking good. All right, go on. I'm going back next door. I While John runs the first unit set, I'll be doing my best to try to keep the second unit set running smoothly. Our guy's just taking the spark hit. He's staggering back, and he's going to turn to throw the barrel away. Yes. And cut. Nice. Like a head and shoulders here. Let, yeah. it, let, it let him bring in. it in. Yeah. Oh, don't want me to see it up there. Probably my biggest concern overall with the movie right now um, is Balthazar's performance. And action. Not that it's bad, but very, very different from the original conception of the movie. And I'm gonna try to get him to do a few things that actually feather back in some, some of the humor that I think we've lost. Ah. You talking to me? Balthazar came to this movie not believing in the comedic side of his character. I felt that there was a big danger that we would essentially get half the character out of this. So I've been trying to cajole and gently encourage him to put more humor into the movie. Nice. Yeah, I think we got that. And yeah, we finally got a monitor hooked up between the two stages because, you know, you just can't go back and forth. And, you know, you like to get there when they're shutting up the shot, not, you know, when they're in the middle of it because then it's just a big hassle to change it. And action. Talking to me. Can you go to the beer for a second? Well, we have them with and without. It changes? Yeah. Keep right. All right, cut. And we can kind of have it snap onto there. And... Don't do that, you know, you know, the, the actual De Niro lines. It's too late. They're here. Okay. <laughs> I was told that's what you wanted. Okay. I thought they were looking for this kind of over-the-top kind of caricature. And then John, you know, kind of went over in his way. I was like, no, that was really good, but uh, can you just do it more like uh, more like you would do it normally? They, they wanted the Bozo character to be this super far out, you know, wacky guy. And uh, I, I never really wanted to be that far out. Action. Yeah! Yeah! John is the director, and we're committed to seeing his vision rule the day here. Cut it. Cut it sound. All right. Thank so, you, Bob, sir. Uh, I'm running back. Do, we want to do shoot. John did an excellent job directing both units. He really pulled through for us. That's lunch. <laughs> what I know from gossip and nothing official is there's a lot of projects at Dimension Miramax that are being sold. Chris Moore came by to tell us that there's a divorce pending between Miramax and Disney. The Miramax Dimension fight that is happening right now between the two Weinstein brothers, Bob and Harvey, and these Disney, sort of the corporate parent, is, is having a big effect on this movie. We're not going to release this movie, so you take it. We're not going to get involved in this franchise. We're not going to do or this thing is happening. The, the irony of this situation between Disney and Bob and Harvey is that this year we purposely chose Dimension to go with Dimension, do a genre film, so we can make a movie that people will go see. And here we are stuck in some corporate battle. It's possible Bob and Harvey don't have a company and Feast just sits on the shelf forever and no one ever gets to see it, which would be a real travesty in my opinion. Okay, guys, uh, this is going to be a, a production wrap on a man who I like to say is probably the hardest working person I've ever seen. It's a production wrap for First Unit on Clue. Thank you very much, sir. 
I'm not uh, involved in acting anymore. This is a nostalgic trip for my beloved son, John. He wanted me to be in his first motion picture. And how can you deny blood? Got kind of choked up, you know. You know, Dad got a little choked up. He says, but I didn't cry. <laughs> but you could see him going like this, making that face. Hey, Dad. Let me get a picture of the two. I'm going to hit you. Say peace. Yeah, that was, that was wild. Today's our last night of shooting. We're going to be shooting all of the outside shots of the bar from a distance, trying to establish the setting, the location, the environment that this movie takes place in. And all our shots are night shots. So if the sun comes up and we're not done, we are royally screwed because there's no going back. This goes right here. We had a few hiccups on the day, ones that we weren't expecting. We were meant to have some posts to tie in some shots to the bar. The roof part of it's not here. It's basically, it's that window right here. Yeah. That little section right there, this is the section that's missing, the beer. See, this is why they should bring the whole damn thing so we can actually shoot what we need to shoot. Originally, it was, it was going to be a whole facade, then they kept paring it down to where now, I guess, there's... I don't, I don't know what's here or what's not here, to tell you the truth. It would have been very easy to bring another eight-foot piece of that set out here so we could at least, on a close-up, get them walking through a breach. Mike wanted to know why we didn't have um, every single piece, and it was a case of, you know, budget restricted us not being able to bring everything. Well, the, the, the whole post. thing is there. It's yeah, like the awning with the post. 40 miles just... from here, and we're out, standing yeah. out here at 4 a.m. with nothing. This is the section that's missing. In an effort to save money, they brought in a day crew to load what is supposed to be the exterior set that we need to shoot through. And since they've never been here for the first five weeks of filming, they brought the wrong portion of the set. Basically, it's going to be interesting to see what the hell we get to film. God's sakes, this is just JV all the way. God. Okay. Clear frame, guys. Doing some blocking. I need everybody over here to clear back. Is that still too close? Well, what do you think? We've got time to do this shot, and then we're, we've got to move. Rolling! Rolling sound! Fire in the hole! Two shots! Just the speed. Okay, guys, we're moving on. Post crash. Post crash up next. <laughs> This evening, Krista Allen had a, a very late pickup. She arrived on set at four and has come to us tired and a few cocktails and um, plenty of attitude. I'm just kind of racing the clock. Like, I can't even play at this point. Right now. I hope that she made it through hair and makeup without pissing off too many of them. So hopefully she'll be walking straight and it'll be fine. If you've seen the dailies, I'm sure people won't notice a difference. And I don't know how to shoot any more POVs without having a background. We can film it in one piece, you know. Well, it's just him kicking it out is going to be much more difficult on his side. As far as the schedule goes, great. We're moving very well today. But as far as getting us to that point, the end of the day is going to be a mad push. So here's your mark for the head. I pick the head up. Mm -hmm. Then they cross. And breaking the lights would be the cue for Eric to look back. Can we just get one, two of just the beats, you know? That's what, yeah, the, the other camera's going to be right here. And quiet, please, action. Peace. Now or forever. Okay. It's it. Okay, guys, that's a cut. That's a production wrap on Feast, everybody. Yeah. We present you with your ceremonial chair back and congratulations on that. Thank you, Joe. It's a joy. So apparently, I just finished my first film. Congratulations to you. You. To you. To you. To you. To you.
with all the trials and tribulation that we've gone through and this, to see that we're here on, the, on our last day and that no matter whatever went down, everybody's really pulled together and got us through this, I'm delighted. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Made it before the sun actually came up. Seeing it now, you know, everybody packing up. And that actually got me a little choked up. Hey, Tom. Looks great. Oh, yeah, she did. Looks really great. It's been tough, but it's been good. I think we got a uh, pretty good movie out of it. <laughs> Pat and I have been on the other side of the curtain watching how uh, movies come to life. Today, the first phase of the process comes to a close, and I don't have the proper vocabulary to describe how exciting and, and enriching this experience has been. You didn't really tame the beast, but you kind of managed it a little bit with it. It's the last day. People are very happy. I feel good about it. I feel like we've, we've accomplished a lot. I'm hoping it all comes together in, in the editing of the film. So. Do you ever think we'd make it, man? Yeah. I remember just standing there thinking that here we started with a script that nobody really seemed to want to make, a director that nobody seemed to believe in, a, a film that we didn't think we could do for the budget and the schedule, and I think it came out well. And that's John. That's all John Gulliger. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, all of these people you know, that worked on this, you know, are, are going to be with us, you know, somehow. Happy forever. All right, you guys, stick with us. We're not done yet. Next week on Project Greenlight. Feast production's over. The only thing now we're looking forward to is post-production. The idea is we're going to have to cut the first pass in six weeks. Now it looks like six weeks is the finished film. This will be bent if, if Ben's here and he's not. Yeah, well, they said they want to screen the whole movie on Thursday. You're gonna go, are you going to that? Oh, really? The only scenario that I see possibly happening out of this, I get a call from Chris Borg. I want to know who was involved in the decision making to decide to invite Ben to his own special f***ing screening and not invite... It's definitely she's one born beforehand. So continuity can get a little weird, you know, just like Balthazar's haircut, you know. Everything in this film takes place in just a matter of hours, so you'll start noticing that things aren't, you know, the same. The nipples show through the they open, don't, they, they don't, don't show through yeah. the open. I knew that would be it. <clears throat> Hey, Krista. Yes? Um, there was some wondering if, about the, you, cha you changed your bra, and, and, and did you, ch did we change the bra or anything? No, like that? you never saw it. I always had the thing on. Always. Okay. You've never but there seen was it. a, like, somehow, you know, we would see kind of like, we saw, we saw like the outline of the, like the nipples a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Just, no. just, no? No, but sorry. Okay. Just check. Just want to make sure you want to, okay. That was really embarrassing. And Krista just flat out called me a nut. Sorry, I, I talked to her about the, uh, the bra thing. Yes, it did. Didn't really go over too well. Um. <laughs> Do you have beer guy on set? It's the last week and everybody's trying to get the rest of the shots that we need. Everyone else is being really nice and helpful. And Kristen went and changed out of her wardrobe because she didn't want to hang around. Where's Ben? Colleen and Davis fill out our assistant director team. Together with Steven, the ADs are in charge of running the set. But if they're unorganized, things can unravel pretty fast. What did you just say? Per who? Come here, please. She came down and said that she's wrapped and she... It was, it was, uh, frantic. <laughs> Chris has had some small parts in really big films, and she's probably seen what other actors get away with, but she can't bring that to our set. Chris is walking from trailer. Hey, hey, hey. How come we didn't know about this last night? Chris, I missed my flight last night. I know. Because I was late, but I got here, and I'm here. No, 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 I'm doing this work out great. So, Kristen... This is uh, picking up the pickup from Friday where you were on your way back, you're pack pedaling, and we're just gonna have you sprayed with some blood in this one. And we're gonna have to put a little blood on you too before we do the take, because. Calm down with the blood, sweetheart. We're gonna get it, don't worry. Don't get it in my eye, please. Because it burns really bad. You did that before. Don't do it again.
So you just had to close your eyes to the to, to bloody movie. Hey, what movie did Krista sign up for? I don't know. <laughs> Are they called Feast? She gets back like this. Bang! Splat! You know, she's backing up. So and um, look, well, you the blood down. is the most important thing right, right now. But is she down here? Not what we shot the other day. Yeah, but I'm not going to do that again. I'm just going to come from here. But if we could just be up here and come back. Okay, could I get some new pads? That'd be great. Yes. Okay. Hammond? Shake them, but don't break them, Chrissy. And action! Okay, Chris, nice deal. Nice one side. Okay. Can we just do a pickup? The only mark. Action. <sighs> Guys, we gotta set up this shot. I'm yeah. gonna try to make it look like a slip, slip, jump kind of thing. Well, we're trying to work backwards from the end of the day to make sure we got enough time to do it. On a bigger budget film, we might spend a week, even conceivably two weeks, doing a piece of action that's this big and involved. It's clearing, guys. Okay, it's picture, guys. Let's lock it up. Action. Good. Stand by. Okay. Nice kid. Walter Walter's nice hair. We know it's growing. It's, it's growing, growing right now. I mean, he's asked to let it grow out as, as much as possible. And so I've been painting in, you know, the silver stuff. Over the course of this film, Balthazar's hair had grown a whole lot. It's especially noticeable when you have a buzz cut. He's right. growing hair like nobody's business. It oh, just kills me. He, yeah. It was his idea. This idea to do, idea to do it. And now we're yeah. just hostage over this thing. Balthazar's next movie starts days after we wrap this movie. It's a Steven Spielberg produced miniseries, and he needs to have long hair for the for the role. I had a talk with the guys on the set. When we get into light, it will be really, really obvious. Right. Obvious to what, though? We haven't really been in light yet. Yeah, but we've seen you lit. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see one of the scenes where I'm okay. lit. If Balthazar refuses to cut his hair, then we would have no other option but to go to his agent and take a more aggressive response to this. Krista has arrived. Everything that could possibly go wrong this morning went wrong. I'm never late, and it was just, it. Project Greenlight is an internet contest. We pick a script, we pick a director, and we let somebody get a chance to make their movie. This time we want to make a horror movie. Feast is a very scary movie. It's Evil Dead meets Diner. This year we have a fantastic director, John Gulliger. It's been over 35 years getting here. Hopefully he's going to pay off. Now it's up to Marcus, Patrick, and John to make a terrific movie. It's the last week. If we don't shoot it this week, it's not going to end up in the film. There's no more time. There's no more money. So this is a very important week. This is lit for before the lights goes off. All right. Now I'm ready to direct a film. I feel that I just had to, uh, you know, get everything shot that I think needs to be in the film. No matter what, you know, I just had to push for it. So, John, we just got a call that, uh, that Krista has just arrived in LAX. One of the actresses that we need more than anything isn't there. And her request was when she called in was, uh, could she go home for a while? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, first step? Okay. It blew my mind because, you know, I'm walking in there, I'm looking at the week we've got ahead of us, and I'm putting things in place to make sure that this can go as smoothly as possible. I, I mean, I, I've never come across any of this. I don't know if, right. I don't know if you've ever experienced it. Okay. Well, I don't know how we're going to do all this. Then. You need the actors to show up on time. Especially if it's a low budget, though. And if an actor just happens to come in late, it really could ruin the day. She missed her flight the night before, but a phone call to my guys would have set us up differently for that day, and we would have planned shooting something else. Okay, guys, we are moving on. Taking a lot of heat. Yeah. <laughs> and we had to 
to take Krista back to the trailer and completely redo her hair and makeup in time to have her for the next take. Okay, so we want Krista for this shot. Oh, really? It would be faster and easier to just jump in the shower. Colleen? Okay. Yeah. So she not be taking a shower. Makeup is saying you don't need to take a shower. I don't care what Michael Myers said. What did they say how long are they going to take? Everyone up there is saying don't take a shower. I don't think she got that much blood on her to tell you the truth. I wanted to just go ahead and just shoot, and, and, and Chris is like, oh, no, no, I had to get cleaned up. The blood stains the face, and, and if you leave it on too long, it'll start to actually leave stain marks. The blood does not stain the hair, and I'm at, I don't know, I'm asking, why are we taking so long to do it? I thought we, she was going to be ready for this shot. Original estimate was 10 after, so another 15 minutes. And I think that that's even pushing it now. Is she's going to be in it. hair another 10 minutes, if not 15. By the time I got down there, she was, she's already wet. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. <laughs> I was in a movie in Florida where the hero was such a pain in the ass to work with that they decided to kill him instead and make someone else the hero. Right I love it. I love it. Hey, Krista? Yes. More blood. No. Um, Krista, you do. <laughs> okay, stop it. Uh, Krista changed her bra. Her bra? The one that she's wearing 